I have full body chills after those rooms. Being the only one that looks like you, the only one with your background, you walk in those rooms, chin up, shoulders back. <laughs> Look, the attack on all of us. Uh, and when she just spoke, and I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here, want to grab Eddie's hand. Aaron, if I could grab your hand, if you're on the set, I grab your hand. We had the cut. When she says that, we have lived that cut. We lived that cut as students at Ivy League schools. We lived that cut when we were lawyers standing in front of a judge that said, where's the lawyer? When you're standing there behind the government table as an assistant United States attorney, we know that cut. I was the only black attorney in the civil division when I was there. The only one out of 50. They have been telling us, and I say they because I am talking about a certain group of people, uh, a certain group of people who, have, who are victimized by fairness who are victimized by competition from the competent and who are upset because they have for so long gotten to be mediocre and rise. So and those right of us who have had to be better than mediocre to get cut are so many. And when we saw what happened, look, they just attacked Kamala Harris for being in a black sorority. So I wore my Delta Sigma Theta colors Joy Reid might wear hers later. The Divine Nine has 4 million black votes. When you saw that $81 million in 24 hours, that was over 44,000 black women, many of them Divine Nine. Their foghorn is what's reminding folks that we are not in the America yet that lives up to its ideals. We haven't been, but we made real progress. And when they are showing us who they are, when they calling us colored, Fox News is talking about colored. Sebastian Gorka called her a woman of colored. That's language nobody uses anymore, and it's not a dog whistle. It's saying we're going to go back to when you were in the back of the bus. Anybody who says that this country shouldn't be its better angels and that we shouldn't recognize actual qualification in a woman of color and that this, they have come for our vote. So they're doing everything in their power because of the browning of America to make it harder for us to vote intentionally. So instead of trying to get our votes, which is exactly what should be happening here, instead they're trying to make white people afraid of us. You know, I was thinking historically about the critique of our laughter. Mm. You know, in the early 1900s, they used to have laughing barrels where we could bear the phrase, the barrel of laughter from. The laughing barrels were, were these barrels set in Jim Crow South because there was a sense in which black folks' laughter would interrupt uh, uh, public space. And so Ralph Ellison wrote an essay in, in 1985 called The Extravagance of Laughter, which is about a joke about a laughing barrel. When you had to laugh, black people had to stick their heads in the barrel. Right? The context, the lineage, right? The fact that my dad couldn't go to Princeton and I teach at Princeton. The fact that just, late Justice Scalia said anybody, any black kid who gets into Princeton, they're being set up to fail. Even when we work hard and we get into these spaces, it's not because of merit. So I, I agree with John talking about qualification, trying to disqualify her, but the context of this political move, which is so continuous across modern, modern American politics, the context in this moment is precisely MAGA Trumpism and what motivates it. And when we're honest about it, then we understand the significance and depth of the moral choice we face. I, I, I know this is a long video and I'm sorry I tried to cut out little bits and pieces to make it shorter. We know this is a big deal and we know people are excited. But within this excitement, I think it's also important to remember the other side. We're not just fighting for Kamala, we're fighting against that. At every level from the top of the ticket all the way to the bottom. And I hope that was as inspiring for you as it was for me. We will not go back. Your vote is your voice, and that voice is your superpower. I have full body chills after watching Maya Wiley and Eddie Glaude discuss the GOP attacks against Kamala on Deadline White House. Every word is gold, but there are phrases in these clips that I will never stop using. It begins with something...